and today I'm going to talk to you about sleeping through the night. So uh, this is sort of like the holy grail of baby sleep, but sleeping through the night um, is really, really age dependent and it's also dependent on a whole lot of other factors lining up to give your baby the best chance of being able to sleep through the night. Now I'm not talking about sleep training your baby or I'm not talking about expecting your newborn baby to sleep all night long without waking for feeds because that's just not realistic. Um, what I want to share with you today is our best tips to make sure you can get all of the factors lined up right so that when your baby is ready to, they have the best chance of being able to sleep for longer stretches overnight. So the first thing we would start looking at is what's happening in your baby's day because the daytime affects the nighttime and uh, you're going to start looking at your baby's naps and your baby's awake windows because these need to be really, really age appropriate. If your baby is having too many naps in the day or too much cumulative daytime sleep, they're just not going to be tired enough to sleep better overnight. Likewise, if they're not having enough daytime sleep, they're actually going into bedtime at night already really overtired and that's going to mean that their nighttime sleep's not as restorative. So they're not going to sleep well at night because they're overtired. Uh, linked into that is your baby's awake windows. So if your baby isn't having enough awake time during the day or enough awake time towards the end of the day before bedtime, then they're, again, they're going into the nighttime undertired. So a baby, a baby in this situation might stay awake for an extended period of time during the night um, and that's just because they genuinely need some awake time in that 24 hour period. So awake times and nap lengths are really, really important to help to set your baby up for good nighttime sleep. When we're talking about naps as well, getting the nap structure around the right way for your baby's age is important too. So this would mean making sure that a six month old baby's late afternoon nap isn't happening too close to bedtime, that it's not happening for too long because any amount of sleep at that age at that time of the day is going to impact their nighttime sleep. So it's making sure that they're napping at the right times but also for the right lengths to positively influence their nights. Once we've got that out of the way, we can look at your baby's calorie intake. So uh, it is perfectly normal for babies to still need milk feeds in the night until they're well established on solids. But again, some babies might and some babies might not need milk feeds in the night. However, you do need to look at their calorie intake over a whole 24 hours because if you think your baby is taking more milk in the night than they're taking during the day, we obviously want to reverse this pattern and try and encourage your baby to have more milk feeds or more solids feeds during the day and therefore take less overnight. Because if they're taking a lot of milk overnight, they're just not gonna be hungry enough to take it during the day. So we kind of want the opposite to happen. If your baby is ready to um, start solids, that's another good way to help their nighttime sleep, but you need to make sure that you're giving them the right solids at the right times because the timing and the type of solids that you're giving can negatively impact your baby's nights. For example, babies under the age of 10 months aren't very effectively able to digest and break down protein overnight uh, because their digestive system has slowed down at night, they're lying down, and their digestive system just isn't mature enough yet to really effectively digest protein. So if your baby is under 10 months and is having protein at their dinner time solids, that could be a reason for their nighttime waking. We would recommend giving protein at the lunchtime meal until your baby's over 10 months old. And if they're on dinner solids, give them starchy carbs. So uh, vegetables, pumpkin, potato, carrot, sweet potato, um, foods like that. Hold off the protein until they're over 10 months. Another factor that will uh, impact your baby's nighttime sleep is the environment that they are sleeping in. And it doesn't matter if this is your room or their own room, we would always still recommend that your baby's room is nice and dark because the dark is obviously a very, very primal cue to your baby that it is nighttime. Uh, so we would, we would advise holding off even using night lights 
Your baby doesn't need a night light until they're around two years old. Having a dark room, using white noise has been proven time and time again to help babies settle to sleep, to help them link their sleep cycles, to help them um, sleep more soundly overnight, and it also can block out other noises that might wake a sleeping baby if you have older children or if uh, some, someone in the household's getting up early to start work. White noise is a really easy way to help your baby sleep better at night. For younger babies, keeping them swaddled all night long is another good way to help your baby settle and sleep well. This is because swaddling helps reduce their startle reflex, which can wake them up towards the end of every sleep cycle overnight. For an older baby, we would recommend using a baby sleeping bag or a sleep sack so that they can't uh, kick their blankets off and get cold or get tangled in their blankets and frustrated. So a swaddle and a sleeping bag are really, really good tools to use in your baby's sleep environment. The other key factor in your baby's ability to sleep well at night is their settling skills. So younger babies, um, sort of three months and younger, they're not as affected by sleep associations as older babies are. So the way that these babies go to sleep isn't necessarily going to create settling issues during the night for them. However, once your baby goes through the four month sleep progression and their sleep cycles have matured, they might start waking every two hours overnight, especially after midnight, simply to have you settle them back to sleep. Um, and, and a clue for this would be that they're waking and you only need to do something like rock them or they'll feed for like 10 seconds and then they fall back asleep. So they're not waking because they need that milk for nutrients, they're waking because they need to suck to go back to sleep. If this is happening and it's causing your baby to have really fragmented night sleep, it is likely that they've also been catnapping in the day or sleeping for 45 minute chunks in the day. So at that point you might want to take a step back and have a look at your baby's settling dependency. Are they relying on you actively doing something to put them to sleep at the start of naps and at bedtime and then again when they wake during the night? And if the answer is yes, then we have a wide range of very, very gradual methods that you can use to, to sort of guide your baby away from that dependency. So you would sort of be easing them off it, weaning them off needing your help to get to sleep. So you're giving them back the skill of falling asleep that they're born with. And in this way, your baby's going to be able to wake between those sleep cycles in the night, roll over and go back to sleep on their own. We would not recommend um, any sort of training around this self-settling unless you've got all the other factors lined up first so that we could confidently rule out that your baby's waking isn't just caused by needing some changes to their naps or needing um, a bit more food in the day or simply making their room darker.